yeah, I've had some patients where I'm doing some hands-on stuff with them and they'll, they'll just start crying. You know, I remember I was working with a gentleman, this was years ago. And he asked me like, Oh, like, have you ever had anyone like cry when you worked with them? And I think at that point I have had mm -hmm. like maybe one person, this was pretty early in my career and he just started tearing up, yeah. you know, and you just accept that that can happen. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. It What is going on guys? Andrew with Pride. Today we have got Jade. Is your last name Elkind or Elkin? You know, that's funny because everyone asks me that. Mm -hmm. And I remember asking my dad about when I was mm -hmm. young and he said Elkind. Elkind. But then when he refers to himself, he says Elkin sometimes. So I'm just mm -hmm. like, I really don't care. Like, yeah. You're just whatever ends up whatever. working. Whatever. Yeah. It's just not one of those things that really bothers me. So I'm like, oh, whatever, El kind, El kin, you know. Yeah. Jade E. I'm just kidding. Jade E. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. I've been right. called worse things before. So that's, I mean. that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Your company is Clinch Performance and Recovery. Yes. You yes. are the physical therapist here at Stimulus. Yeah. And, yeah. And uh, you've been here for six months? Maybe a little longer? About, yeah. So I've been here since March. Okay, yeah. Here in March. So, right, right. yeah. It's been awesome. You know, this is a great gym. Jeff and Jason yeah, have been dude, fantastic. I'm like, so sad I'm leaving. Just, I know, right? It's weird. <laughs> yeah. Because you, you know how it is. Like, when you find a really good gym or, like, uh -huh. a really good, well, a really good place to work in general, but, like, a really good gym, mm -hmm. it's like, it's like, fuck, dude, you don't want to leave that ever, you know? Right. right. Um, you can tell, like, they really, like, they really care about oh, yeah. this place. Yes. Where they put a lot of work in and they're just, percent. you can tell they're into it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, but yeah. yeah, that sucks you're leaving, but, you know, good job for you for moving on and pursuing, you know, yeah. your own goals. I mean, yeah. I'm an, a big advocate of that too. So. Yeah. And again, you can always come yeah. back. It's no biggie. I know it's Reno. It might just suck you back anyway. I yeah, guess dude, that's what happens. It really <laughs> does happen. <laughs> that's what people say. Yeah. I'm like, oh. So, so many of my friends are like, are like, have fun getting out of the black hole. You'll be back. And I'm like, don't say that. Like, holy <laughs> shit. Um, but it's true. Pretty much every friend I've had who, who moved away ended up uh -huh. coming back within two years. So, yeah, you know, know. We'll, we'll see where life goes. Cause yeah. I love, I love Reno. I do, but you know, it's, it's just a matter of, we'll, We'll go where, where the world takes me. But anyway, mm -hmm. enough about me. Tell us about you. Give us your background. How did you get, how did you get into background. being a physical therapist? Well, actually, um, so I went to college and I got a biology degree, which is probably mm -hmm. like the most generic thing you can get as far as science goes in college. Mm -hmm. So I ended up moving back home and working as a bank teller for like 13 months. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was one of those people that moved back in with my parents because I didn't know uh, what to do with my degree. Yep, that classic. was me. Yep, there we go. <laughs> so anyway, um, the guy I was dating at the time was like, hey, why don't you look into physical therapy? Like you're all into like exercise and all that stuff. So I was like, okay, I'll look into it. And I observed with a small clinic you know in my hometown right. and um the two guys were super cool and you know i looked around i was like you know i can see myself doing this so right. then really just applied to school and got in and just went with it and here i am you know sorry to say i didn't have one of those like oh my god i broke my leg and they they mm. gave me my life back stories it was like no That's no what, just that, that does tend to be the whenever people end up in like you know, physical therapy or chiropractic or something like that. There's always this like come to Jesus moment where it's like, oh my God, they saved my life. They gave me my life back. No, no. Um, that's kind of interesting though. So, no. so it was mostly just, was there any real passion for physical therapy at all? Or was it kind of just something you started seeing what people were doing and it was just like, you know what? That's kind of cool. Yeah. It was like, you know, I, like I said, I just went there. Mm -hmm. It was like, you know, I can see myself doing this. Right. Like it just, it was just kind of like a match, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I just went along with it and just dove in and, and here I am. So now I have my own business. Right, right. It's been a, it's been a good ride. It's yeah. pretty awesome. I it's nearly awesome. did the same thing actually yeah. got into physical therapy just because, mm -hmm. um, the only reason I didn't do it was because at the time Reno didn't have a kinesiology program and mm -hmm. I was too scared to leave home. So <laughs> I, uh, I, I never ended up doing it. And like, I'm, you know, ultimately I'm glad I went into like training instead of physical mm -hmm. therapy, not for any specific reason. I'm just, I like how life is now, mm -hmm. but physical therapy was always one of those really interesting things to me because it's, it was one of the first things that, you know, I'd been around the fitness industry forever, but it always just kind of seemed like with lifting weights, you just lift weights, try to reach failure and do more. Physical therapy was the first time I ever saw anything fitness related where it was like, Oh, there's science and mm -hmm. thought and assessment that goes into this. And it was, seeing that it was broken down at a deeper level where it's like, it's like, oh, there's, you know, 
X issue, we're going to try to find Y solution, you know, mm-hmm. instead of just being like, well, fuck it. Let's just, let's just do more, you know? So, um, I guess for you, whenever somebody gets into the fitness industry, the typical thing is, you know, they go massage, they go trainer, physical therapist, chiropractor, maybe massage therapist. What would you caution someone about who's looking into physical therapy? Um, okay. So I guess some things I wish I would have known in the beginning, Mm -hmm. um, just make sure like you have a good like idea as to really what you like, why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Because I think, and this is kind of more broad, I think for more people who are just going to school and college in general, especially grad school, Mm -hmm. because I don't think like the prices are going down on anything. God, no. (laughs) So it's like, this is a really big lifetime money investment so try to do the best you can to make sure it's what you want to do like if you like advice i've given to people before you know if you're not sure like see if you can talk to a pt you know i just met a kid the other day and um heard that he was looking into pt i was like hey here's my card if you have questions like please reach out to me i'd love to help you with that to give you advice as to what to um be prepared for, yep. you know, when you get into the real world. Oh yeah. So I think that's a big thing is like really try to make sure that it's something you want to do. And if you aren't sure, you know, try to reach out, see if you can observe. I mean, yep. if you go to PT school, you're going to have to do that anyway. Yeah. Um, and then don't just look at what they're doing. Actually like ask questions. Like, cause there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff, especially, you know, with the insurance companies, mm-hmm. like I'm a completely out of network provider. Right. And, um, when you're going through insurance companies, like people don't really understand like how much the insurance companies dictate, like what you can or cannot do as a healthcare Mm -hmm. provider, because they're the ones that pay you. Right. So that's why you see some of these clinics and it's not just PT, you know, it's other healthcare professions too, Mm -hmm. where, you know, they only spend like 10 minutes with you or there's like a million people on their schedule. So people tend to get lost like in the numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's another thing to be aware of is like, well, are you okay with doing that? Yes. The the insurance thing is is mm-hmm. huge because, I mean, even the um, – and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not saying this is a bad thing. It's just one of the realities of the profession. But like the massage mm-hmm. place or the, the Cairo clinic that I do massage at, they um, found a way to actually do massage through insurance. Mm-hmm. But I'm working on people in, you know – 30 minute increments, not counting the five minutes to set up and, and break down. So it's more like 20 minutes. I have time to work on one little thing as opposed to look at it from a holistic standpoint yeah. of everything that we have going on. So it's mm-hmm. like, that's, that is such a big part of it. And oh, that's sweet. actually one of the things I admired about what you mm-hmm. did was that you were like, yeah, like I'm out of network. I don't do insurance. And I was like, yeah. I was like, and I think I said uh, exactly to you, oh, so you can do the stuff that actually works like so- something like that. Yeah. And I mean, like it's freaking awesome because now I can actually take what I know as a PT mm-hmm. and be a PT and not be <clears throat> bound at all by like, oh, it's like showing some insurance company going to yeah, reimburse Insurance is me. only going to cover this. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And then, you know, like patients don't have to like waste their time, like mm-hmm. trying to get authorization and blah, blah, yeah. blah. It's like, if you need to come in, you know, just reach out yeah. and I'll work with you to try to like get you in as soon as possible. But, right. you know, it's been freaking awesome too being out of network because like, yeah, I can... I can be the best PT, you know, with what I know. Yeah. And it's cool to be able to like reach out to, you know, different groups in town, you know, different businesses. So um, I do a lot of work with, uh, you know, like jujitsu people. Right. Because yeah. that's that, that like. That makes sense with the logo. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, look, my logo looks like two people wrestling yeah, with each exactly. other. And I did that on purpose. Yeah. And a little yin yang symbol. Yeah. Symbol. Cool. I like Actually, that. Or shout out to symbol. Caleb Lancaster who helped me with my logo. Boom. Good job, um, Caleb Lancaster. Yeah. He's a freaking awesome jujitsu person, too. Heck yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's been really cool to like be able to work with that niche as well. Plus, I've had experience doing it. So that's another cool thing about being, you know, out of network or having my own businesses like I can really take my experience and my extracurriculars and combine that with my clinical experience too because oh yeah yeah if I'm working with a grappler it's like well I've been doing that stuff for like about seven eight years so I know what it's like to do those things Mm -hmm. so I can combine the clinical with the practical you know, experience, you know, so I still do that. And now I'm kind of getting like into triathlons, you know, other ways to right. yeah, myself. Yeah, so that's like really that. cool too. Yeah. The, the practical experience uh, aspect is, is so cool to me because mm-hmm. it's, 
you know, it's one of those things where in, in, instead of you just like theorizing things and just kind of being like, oh, you know, here's, here's what like a book said. It's you're actually coming from personal experience. Right. There's like, mm-hmm. there's a reason that, um, you know, massage therapists that I've been to who have like a lot of muscle versus massage therapists that I go to where they are, you know, kind of the more like hippie vibe and stuff mm-hmm. like there's essential oils all in the air and like tapestries all over the place. They're working on me a lot lighter because they don't quite understand what it is that I'm experiencing because they don't take part in that sport. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I think with life, you know, experience is really the best teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you don't know the stove is hot until you touch it. Sometimes you can read it all you want. People can tell you, but unless you actually experience it, you know, um, that's just you can't. you can't get that from a book. Yeah. I mean, the books are great. You know, I read research and everything too, but I think that's just one piece of the, that's one ingredient for the yeah. whole recipe. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. And, and the, the information is a huge part of it. But again, it's like, it, it is exactly like you said, you know, it's once you have experienced it, once you've actually worked through it, that is when you can actually put it all together and have something you know, real, so to speak. Yeah. But for, for you, what were some of the things about being a physical therapist that were, I guess kind of unexpected or you just didn't really quite see as being a part of things for you. Um, can you like be more specific with that? Like, um, Ooh. So like when I first got into training, I didn't realize I was going to be dealing with so many people's emotions. Mm. I had no yeah. idea. That I mean, is like, a good point. Yeah. Yep. That, <laughs> it's literally one <laughs> of the craziest is. things that I ever dealt with. Yep. I had a, I had a, a mm-hmm. client like tell me that she was like cheating on her husband and this is like nine years ago but I was like what the fuck like you're just I'm, like <laughs> I was like I'm 20 uh, why are you telling me this like <laughs> you're like I'm not that type of therapist yeah exactly yeah, I, yeah that, that does happen you're just like hey. you know I just let people talk you know and yeah. I just listen mm-hmm. you know and um especially if you're working one-on-one with people mm-hmm. and especially you know if they are getting good results from you I mean you do form like so much of a relationship so people oh, yeah. do oh, yeah. learn to trust you and then they'll just open up to you and it's like i said i just let them talk you know i let them listen you know yeah. it's just because people are people and you know you gotta let them people go are humans stuff, you know yeah. that's that's it but i that is a good point i did not expect so much of that when i went into school totally catches yeah you off guard. yeah it's like yeah. now you get like oh now i understand like the bartender or the hairdresser <laughs> yeah right know? right but it's, but it's the same thing i've had some patients tell me about like their spouses and everything it's like oh geez. oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> let's do they uh in, in uh, massage therapy school they have like a whole chunk mm-hmm. just about like the emotional aspect mm-hmm. of, of like massage and stuff like that. And they're like, Hey, you're going to learn everything about them mm-hmm. and they're going to ask about you and you need to just not like, yeah. so yeah. that's, that was something else that did mm-hmm. surprise me too, was trying to limit mm-hmm. yourself in yeah. the conversation. Well, and then when you're doing like hands-on mm-hmm. work too, cause like I do a lot of like manual therapy yes. as well, you know, um, people store, you know, like traumas exactly. and whatnot in their tissue. Mm-hmm. So, uh, like, there's a really good book. I don't know if you've read it. Body keeps the, the score. Yeah, exactly. yeah, Bessel yeah, van der Kolk. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So that's a really, really cool book. But um, yeah, I've had some patients where I'm doing some hands-on stuff with them, and they'll they'll just start crying. You know, I remember I was working with a gentleman. This was years ago, and he asked me like, "Oh, like, have you ever had anyone like cry when you worked with them?" And I think at that point I have had mm-hmm. like maybe one person. This was pretty early in my career, and he just started tearing up. Yeah. You know, it's, you just accept that that can happen mm-hmm. and that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. it is. A, mm-hmm. It is really interesting, too, because it's uh, it's it really does honestly seem a lot of times almost less of like an emotional cry and more of like like a release cry. Yeah. Just like, just like yeah. oh, my God, like, you know, mm-hmm. just something kind of getting like out of you, so to speak. It's um, mm-hmm. it's very strange. I, by the way, I have this funny little rule that if I hear about a book three times, I have to buy it. I have, I have talked about that book uh-huh. at least three times on this podcast. So anyone who has heard all three of those episodes, you have to buy that book now. The Body Keeps the yeah, Score by Vessel van der Kolk. It's yeah. just, it's really insightful. It's, it's really a really cool. great book. Yeah. yeah. I need to, I need to read it again, honestly. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's so freaking good. Mm-hmm. Um, what would you say separates good physical therapists from bad physical therapists? And I use those terms mm-hmm. lightly right. because obviously everybody can be good at something, but it's, mm-hmm. 
we all know what someone means when they talk about a good and ver- bad version of their profession. So what, what would you say kind of creates that delineation for people? Well, it's really, in my opinion, just like listening to what's important to that patient and what their goals are. So with the way I try to run, you know, clinch is it's all about what your goals are. Mm-hmm. I mean, I am not one to tell you like, oh, like this is what's good for you. You know, as far as what you want to accomplish in life. I mean, yeah, if you want to be a jujitsu person and be able to like compete in a match, you know, three months from now, it's like, okay, let's work towards that. Mm -hmm. Now there are some situations where it's like, no, you just blew your ACL. Like it's (laughs) probably not going to happen. You got to be realistic too. But I think, you know, what separates, you know, some PTs from the others is really trying to understand what that patient is trying to accomplish and what their goals are and then trying the best you can to work towards that in a realistic way you don't want to over promise things to be like oh yeah we can like we can get you freaking you know competing in two months when you just blown your ac i mean like some people probably try to do it anyway there's exceptions and stuff like that but it's like you gotta be like realistic too and i can probably see like with what you do yeah. You always gotta, you gotta under promise and over deliver. That's, that's kind of always the, always Sometimes, the goal. Sometimes, yeah, yeah, you do have to do that. But I think it's finding that balance between like, yeah, let's work you towards <clears throat> this goal that's important to you right. with let's be realistic Absolutely. about it too. Cause sometimes you gotta like tell people like, Hey, like, listen, like, in order to be able to accomplish this down the road, like, I think that this is the best way for you to go about yep. this. Like, this is what I really recommend for you. Yeah. Now people that are going to do whatever they want to do, Yeah. you know, but I think um, just like talking to patients, you know, over the past, you know, eight years that I've been a PT, mm-hmm. one of the biggest complaints I've gotten is like, well, you know, I've, they have me doing this stuff and like, I don't know why I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. That was something I really liked about, um, so uh, by the way, guys, I, I actually did a session with Jade a little while ago, but that was something, that was something I really liked about what we, what we did was there were specific questions about how I actually train, mm-hmm. which again, because you weight train, you understood what I was talking about. Um, there were detailed breakdowns of like, you know, how my body, you know, just like watching me do a squat and everything. You're like, okay, you know, because you're, because of how your foot, your knee, your ankle mm-hmm. are all going to like interact with each other. This is what mm. might be going on. Yada, yada, yada. And then you'll actually test it right there. You weren't just like, Hey, you know, it might be this shit. Okay. See you next week. It was like, we're actually going into, we're actually breaking things down and we're yeah. testing things right then yeah, like to actually why, see if there's validity to it. Yeah. It's like, why would you have someone do something when you haven't actually looked at whether or not they need that? Yep. Yeah. You know, I mean like sometimes you can just, gain from clinical experience. Yeah, like, oh, I've absolutely. seen this 8,000 times. It's highly likely to be this, yep. but it doesn't take that long just to freaking look at someone's ankle. Yep. Yeah. You I, know? Had, I mean, just to check to see how much dorsiflexion yeah. they have. I had so know? many, there were two PTs and I won't say who they were, but there were two PTs that I talked to about uh, an issue that I was having with my knee. And both of them, they were like, they're like, oh, it's probably this, just mobilize this, mobilize this and you'll be fine. And it was like, oh, okay, cool. And then it was like months later, I'm like, wow, that didn't do shit. If mm-hmm. only we tested this, you know, which to, to me honestly seems like a no brainer. Like, hey, check the shit that you're, you know, ass- assess the stuff that you're trying to figure mm-hmm. out. Assess and then reassess. Exactly. You know? And then, you know, try to see if the intervention actually works. Yeah, know? absolutely. Mm-hmm. Are there any really common mistakes that you see as far as physical therapists go? Um, I think the biggest thing is just like providing a blanket treatment to everybody. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I mean, everyone's different. You know, even if you have like, you know, this runner who wants to run a 10K and this runner who wants to run a 10K, you can't give. I mean, you could, but I don't think it's the right thing to do. I don't think it's right to give both of those people the same interventions Mm -hmm. because this person may have a different type of. Uh, hip alignment in this person. This person may have some obliquities in their hip that have to be addressed that may be different from this person. Mm-hmm. Maybe this person has an ankle issue. Oh, and then it's like, well, what's their history? Ooh. You know, like what other injuries have they incurred? You know, have they had any <clears throat> surgeries? Because that can affect things too. So I think the biggest mistake that I see is just like, oh, just do the same thing for all runners yep. or do the same thing for all jujitsu people or do the same thing for all, you know, 
moms who just want to be able to pick up their kids from the floor. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like you have to individualize things. Mm-hmm. And I think that really the only way you can get true individ- individualization, where's it hard for me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, is In- once again, to have that one-on-one time to get yeah. to know the person and talk to them and look at them mm-hmm. and actually see what it is that, see where they really are yeah. and then also see where they want to go. Yeah. And again, reassessing that and making sure that mm-hmm. the program is actually getting them to where they want to go. Mm-hmm. Cause it's, um, I'm, I'm certain I've talked about this before, but I mean, like, you know, if, if you make a perfect program for someone and it's not getting done for whatever reason, you know, they're too busy, they're too stressed, they're mm-hmm. too this, they're too that. It's like, okay, well, then the program obviously is not perfect. Mm-hmm. You've got to make some changes here and there. Even if that means that the timeline might take longer, mm-hmm. if it's going to get them to actually abide to it, you know, yeah. if it's going to get that, uh, you know, that consistency out of the program. Mm-hmm. Well, it's tough too, because like, let's face it, like we are all so busy nowadays. Yep. So developing a program that's realistic for that person, um, like that's really important too. Sorry, I got a little squeak going on right yeah, now. Your guys. swamp cooler is chiming. A little tiny it agrees. Baby swamp cooler. Yeah. There we go. It's cute. I like it. I know they're really tiny. They were only they're like thirty like, bucks they're too. They're like adorable. Yeah, yeah I, I know they're really. I kind of want one like next to my bed. Just be like, oh, my cute little. Swamp I I have done that actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, per- they're perfect. They work yeah, really that's well. That's when you know you need more friends. Like I want a swamp. Like cooler I just want a little swamp bed. buddy. Like, yeah, 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 exactly a swamp buddy. Um, are there any? Are there any like? pros and cons that you maybe didn't expect about being being a, a PT. So like for, for me, uh, one of the things that I really didn't expect was how much of training I was actually going to be taking home with me. I had no idea that I was going to be taking this job home with me as often as I do. Is there anything like that? Yeah. As I far mean, as there's PTs always go? paperwork, you know, and especially like when you have your own, you know, clinic, your own business. Yeah. I mean, there's always like paperwork and background stuff with mm-hmm. that, you know, that a lot of people don't see, you know, but you know, it's not, patient's job to be aware of that you know it's yeah but but yeah if you know people who are going into pt it's like just dealing with all the background stuff you know and depending on what type of setting you're in you know there could be more of that you know and dealing with other people and then the laws you know to abide by and and whatnot so yeah i mean they they go through some of that in school a little bit but once again most of it's just learning Mm -hmm. you know through real experience so i mean that's probably the biggest complaint that i think any healthcare worker has is just like all the paperwork and yeah. all the, you know the un well it's not unnecessary it is necessary but yeah the bs crap that you really don't want to deal with yeah it's it's, it's it essentially just starts to feel like busy work you know it's like it's what it's a lot of crap where you're just like yeah hey, i can toss podcast in in my ears for this and just hey guys you could toss this podcast in your ears um but no <laughs> like just basically put a podcast on and just kind of crank through all the busy work and mm-hmm. stuff like that so you're, you're your own clinic, you're, you know, running your own, your own deal. What would you say? I mean, if, if just, you know, let's say someone just finished up PT school and they come up to you and say, Hey, you know, I don't know if I want to run my own thing or work for someone else. How would you kind of break that down with them? Well, for that person, mm-hmm. that person has to know who that person is. Mm. I mean, that's thing. Like some people just have that like entrepreneurial mindset, you know, they, they want the challenge, you know, they want to be able to make their own path and, you know, make their own way. Um, whereas some people like, they just aren't like that. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're okay with, you know, someone telling them, you know, what to do and how to do things. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that either. You know, I think it's good to have both, but for someone, you know, just out of school and if they're like, Oh, I want to open my own clinic or if I want to be an employee, I think that's something where it's like, you just have to really know yourself. And then, um, cause I think if you do, I think if you know yourself, then all the challenges and hardships that come up along the way, like you're going to be able to learn how to deal with that mm-hmm. because you know, you can, yep. you know, you, you know, you can figure it out. You know, that the challenge is something that complements your personality. Yeah. I mean, I'm that type of person because hell, I just signed up for an Ironman next right, year. Right. So it's like, <laughs> obviously like a challenge. Yeah. And I, you know, I used to do like mixed martial arts and everything. Um, so I think the, you know, the entrepreneurship just matches my matches personality. You, yeah. you know, it's, and yeah, some people are just really driven in that regard. Yeah. You know, probably kind of like you too, you know, yeah, yeah. having your podcast and all the, all the, all the random shit that I do. Glenn, why do I do so much stuff? Um, it's that shiny object syndrome. Oh my it's god! Hard, I, I know. know, dude. I'm like doing research. Like I'm gonna do research on like 
knee injuries in jujitsu. And it's like, thank God I got that blog post done. Oh, but then God. it's just like, oh, I'm going to do ACL <laughs> stuff. And then I start thinking of runners and I start looking at that. Yeah. And it's like, you got to like just kind of just stick to one stick. thing. Exactly. Yeah. So, so g- generally speaking, I would think most people, once they finish PT school, um, are going to go start out at least being self employed. What would you say were some of the things that you actually learned, or excuse me, not self employed, but working for someone else? Mm-hmm. Um, what would you say were some of the things that you learned that were really, really significant? Like, I guess to frame this better, I always tell people when they want to start being a trainer, no matter what, go work for someone else for one year. Cause you're going to learn how systems work. You're going to learn different kinds of assessment protocols. You're going to learn different coaching styles. You're going to be fed, uh, fed clients to actually have you make some fucking money in the beginning, mm-hmm. uh, all these different things. Is there anything like that, that you look back on as like, Oh, like this was one of the huge benefits of working for someone else or shit. I wouldn't have learned this if I hadn't done that. You know, mm-hmm. do anything like that. Um, yeah. So with me, uh, with my starting job, um, I mean, it's going to be different for everybody, but I had a really wide diversity of different patients. Like yeah. I worked a little in peds, outpatient, skilled nursing, hospital. Peds is pediatrics. By oh the yeah. Way, pediatrics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, that was really good for me because I got to get experience, you know, in different niches mm-hmm. and not have to deal with the whole like, oh, how am I going to like find patients, do my own marketing, you know, that. You start figuring out who you like too because you get thrown just this like massive, uh, mm-hmm. you know, like just this hugely different clientele and you start yeah. figuring out like, oh, you know, I don't like working with people who have this kind of issue or, oh, I don't mm-hmm. like working with these people or blah, 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 or whatever right. it may be. And it's like you start, you start to kind of figure out what you're really good at, which is cool. Oh yeah, that's, yeah, absolutely. And that's actually a big reason is why I decided to do that too. Cause I knew I was going to get, mm-hmm. you know, a wide variety of patients yeah. and it was like, okay, like now I know like outpatient is my thing. <laughs> like, yeah. Outpatient is definitely my thing. Yeah. Well, the, the cool thing too is like with, um, with Clinch, you know, being that you work with so many, like so many like, uh, MMA athletes and stuff like that you're getting this really, cause I mean, I would say Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is probably at, at least very rapidly becoming one of the most diverse sports that I can think of. I mean, like basically regardless of like body type, you know, sex, mm-hmm. race, religion, whatever, it seems like everybody has at least tried Jiu Jitsu mm-hmm. at this point. So you've gotten to work with so many people and that probably does a lot to really just keep you keep you on top of the ball. And I think that's cool. You know, you're not just working with, oh, I only work with this one kind of athlete or whatever. Right. So I yeah. And it's really cool too, because like with jujitsu, I mean, you know, people who do jujitsu, there are a lot of like memes out there and a lot of funny sayings. And mm-hmm. one of them is like, oh, jujitsu is like murder yoga. Or like one of my favorites is people trying to fold your clothes with you still in them. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, that's like true. You know, especially if you do gi, but you know, I'm, I don't yeah. do gi. I'm, I'm, like, I'm an ogi like person. Either. I prefer no gi. <laughs> yeah, I'm an ogi person. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's cool because like it, it really, um, it's like you have to have everything. You have to have good endurance. You know, you have to have good cardio. You have to have power. You know, especially mm-hmm. if you're doing wrestling and take sta- takedowns. Good mobility good strength but you have to really be able to incorporate all of it together to be a highly functioning not hurt jujitsu person which jujitsu people we're all just kind of silly it's like oh i'll ask people like hey you have anything going on today and they're like oh my shoulder hurts but you know it just does that yeah yeah exactly (laughs) just kind of like yeah i get it let's let's figure it out well jade i want to i want to be respectful of your time i know you got to get out of here uh right at 1 30 but um i guess just to close it out is there anything that i didn't ask you about anything that's just really top of mind that you're like oh shit i gotta tell these people about this anything that's sticking out for you um you know really like my philosophy is just you know figuring out like who you are and what your goals are and just really trying to surround yourself with people who are supportive Right. of that you know whether it's you know you have an athletic goal or a race or something or if it's like a a business goal or school you know i think like most of us have gone through times in our life where you know maybe people have told us like oh you can't do that or like you shouldn't do that i've literally had people tell me like when i signed up for my iron man like oh you have 11 months to quit and holy like, fucking yeah, I've literally bitter had wow someone, like say that to my face and it's like okay like whatever Jeez. <laughs> but it's just um 
you know, like surround yourself with people who are supportive of the things you want to do yeah. and, you know, try to get the best help, whether it's coaching or a personal trainer and massage therapist mm -hmm. like yourself or a PT to help you move towards yep. those things, yeah, you know, because find the people that are in your corner. It, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And fighters, you know, would know about that, too. Oh, so, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, I think that's, you know, what I would have to wrap it up with is oh, just beautiful. Yeah, just, you know. Go after your goals, man. Yeah. We, have, we have one. I mean, I don't know what people believe in. Potentially as far as one life like, here. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, with this life that we have, you know, like. At least make something fucking cool it. out of it. Exactly. Yeah. The next thing after that. I mean, I don't know. But yeah, yeah, for right. this time here, it's like. Drive single mindedly. It. It's something that's important to you. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, if people want to find you, where do they find you at? Um, so I have a Facebook. Um, it's Clinch Performance and Recovery. And I do have an Instagram. Um. I'm like terrible social media. So I think it's clinch underscore uh, performance. Um, and I do have a website, clinch performance and recovery dot com. Beautiful. Okay. And Jack if someone just wants to get in contact with you to actually set up a session, what's the easiest way to do it? Or what's um, the best way? Yeah, probably through the website. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or you can email me at admin, A-D-M-I-N at clinch recovery dot com. Beautiful. Perfect. Perfect. All righty. Well... Jade, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. I'm of glad course, I was able course. to I know, grab dude, you got, before you freaking move. Right, got it literally a week <laughs> a week before I'm out of here. Alrighty, well, um, yeah, I guess that's that, guys. This is Jade with Clinch, hold on, Clinch Performance and Recovery. Wanted yes. to get the whole thing right. Yes. And uh, my name's Andrew with Pride, and we'll see y'all later. Bye.